Thank you all for joining today's WebEx seminar. My name is Bill Richardson, the Director of Training and Education here at SST Software. Today, we're going to cover the topic of scouting utilizing Cirrus while in the field. So let's jump right into this. The first thing I would bring to your attention in using Cirrus for crop scouting is at the uh, grower farm and field view, if you hit the, the three parallel bars right up here, you get this settings button and I would go into the settings and once this would pop up, I would look at the reports option right here. And once this pops up, whether you're running a branded Cirrus or not, if you're running a branded Cirrus, you'll have your logo, but if you don't, you could scan a logo and add that in. So that would appear on all your reports, as well as your name, phone number, all your contact information, email, address, as well as your crop protection fertilizer rec disclaimer if you needed one of those in there. Uh, so you can put all of this in here for all your contact information for your reports to be uh, laid out and printed out on your reports themselves. If I go back, one other option I would show you here is on the scouting type po scouting type for the option here is between points and polygons. I would imagine that most people are going to use polygon, but I'll talk about point mode uh, here in a little bit. But I'll have that set globally to the polygon option. Hit back, hit done, go back in here to the grower farm field level and pick a grower and pick a farm and pick a field and run down to that particular field and begin to do the actual scouting thereof. So in this case, I pull into the field. I'm having to mock this up, of course, because I'm not in that field. But I would be at the field level showing here this uh, 01 field, 35.95 acres. I would come down here on the bottom and hit the plus sign and choose the scouting operation in the pop-up. And when this pops up, it's going to come in here and I'm doing a whole field scouting operation for my crop. So I would fill out my crop here, and I'm, of course, put the default of the scouting. And in the drop-down for the crop option, I would have all my different crops. If you didn't have your crops set up as appropriate as you need it, you can hit the plus sign, and everything A to Z there would appear, and you could put check marks by the crops you would want to use, and that becomes your short list. So if we came in and say, well, that happens to be corn, you could set your, grow your uh, growth stage group or the stage growth corn growth stage, the growth scale, or the decimal system, whichever those is appropriate for the cropping practice you're working with, and then fill out any other pertinent and detailed information that you would want tying to the general crop information for that scouting op. Now, if I went out there and I found an issue that I had across the field in two or three spots that I had an issue with the weed pressure, I could select the weed option, it turns orange, and then when I select the weed database, let's say we have a Palmer amaranth problem, um, we could come in here and fill out the density of the stage and the height and the count and all of this. But you can also take pictures. So if I click on the actual uh, camera itself here, you can take a photo of that particular weed or you can use a saved one on your iPad itself and add that in for what it is that you want to show within the actual report, which I'll show later. So you'll notice that that camera turns to an orange color, which indicates you have at least one and you can have a maximum of five images tied to each of these different layers. Now if I come over here and I go to the insects database um, and I find that I've got an insect pressure on that field, I can hit the drop down list. This is my short list option and I might come in here and say well I've got a corn leaf aphid issue going on. I could fill out the density stage and so on and so forth but on the same token I could hit my camera to choose to take a picture or pull uh, from retrieve from some of the particular ones I have right now to show the corn leaf aphid on the leaves and that would appear on my reports here momentarily. Now you can store up to eight different weeds, eight different insects, eight different diseases, and six different beneficials. So if I had a second insect outbreak I could hit the green circle there on the bottom right with the plus sign and that would add a second database in. I could then choose my drop down list. I've got the same issue or I have the same options popping up with my short list. I could come in here then and fill this out specific to all the detailed information for what I need. Once I would save this in the top right corner, well before I go to that I'm going to go to the general section, click on the general and you have the general information that you can incorporate as well as the soil conditions as well as the field weather information. On the field weather information if you're or at the field level you can click the add local weather information and it will populate that based upon information gathered around in your part of the world and used to populate all these different input options. Once we get that inputted then we would save this in the top right corner give it a name if you don't give it a name it's just going to call it scouting ties to today as the event date and of course pick the appropriate season 
And for the Save and Create a Product trick, I'm on a uh, crop protection and fertilizer recommendation. You can add notes in up to 4,000 characters long. You can also add five pictures or, or images into the notes page there. Once I save that, because I told it to save and create a crop protection and fertilizer rec, it immediately pops up here with that field and shows me down here on the bottom that I got to different products as far as the options for creating my crop, crop protection and fertilizer recommendations. So I could come through here and fill this out, click on the product box, and there's my herbicides down through the stabilizers as far as nitrogen, and then pick whatever product in my short list for what I want to go out there, whatever rate that I want to put on, and whatever the units would be inappropriate to that, as well as the registration code. And once I pick that registration code, the labels then become highlighted. I can click on that label, and if I were back at the office, I could download this and save this while I had internet connection. And when I'm in the field, this would be an option that I could just click on, and it would pop, pop up and show me all the label information regarding the specifics on the details of the inputs and following it to uh, uh, into the inputs based upon the regulations. So I'll, I'll back out of here and come down here and we'll put a carrier in on this one. And we'll just say this is going to be water and we're going to put down a total of five gallons per acre just for sake of argument. And if I wanted to add in a second particular product, I would hit that green circle with the plus sign. It would add in a second product type. I could come in here then and put on whatever it is next that I've got. So in my insecticide, I could come down here and pick whatever product that I want. Again, that's my short list. Put down a particular rate for what you want to mix that in uh, as far as the amounts to be applied out there for an acre and fill all that out. And again, you have your label option if you select that. If you had downloaded that, that's going to appear here in this view. And you can pull that up and look at the label based upon that particular product itself for, to make sure that you're going by the particular label for that product. And there again, if I come down here to the bottom, I've got the application information we can record, the target pest information that we can record, and the product source. I can also select the plus sign on the, on the middle part of the screen over to the right. And if you hadn't collected earlier in the season the planting layer of the tillage, you can do that now and incorporate that and put that information in here as well and save all that in one fell swoop. So right now I've got that field. I've set everything up. I'll save this out as a recommendation. I can either just take the default, which is just going to call it crop protection and fertilizer for the option for the name. The event date is today's date, season's 2018, of course, and I'm going to save it as a recommendation. You also have 4,000 characters that you can set this up for as far as the amount of characters you can use on the max. And then you have your from and to date, which is one full week. You can, you can click on either of those and set that from and to date to a more narrow uh, period of days or a longer stretch, whichever you might need. You also have Slingshot if you got your Slingshot API, API code um, uh, here that you can click on that, enter that, and that would Slingshot that out to that modem on that machinery. We'll save that out, and we'll go to a second field. So I'm going to come over here and go to number two, and the number two field is a 27.16 acre field. Come down here to the bottom, fill all this out, hit the plus sign, go into the scouting database, and fill this information out for the crop and whatever that might be as far as the rest of the inputs go. We come down here to the weeds database and we notice that we still have a Palmer amaranth issue. And we fill out all the specific detailed information. We come down here to the insects on that same field. We notice that we have the same problem with the corn leaf aphid. Of course, I could click on the cameras and add in pictures and everything. But here's the power of this. If I have the same field that are abutting, uh, fields that are abutting up to one another, we can save that, save that information out, say yes to creating a crop protection and fertilizer. And when we save that, we can come in here, it saves it, immediately pops back up. We can use our recents. So if I click the recents button there, it's going to say, okay, what do you want to look at? Well, you can look at you know, whatever tank mixes that you might have, or you can look at your recent inputs, what you did for products. So here's all my recent ones that I've laid down on fields in the past. So if I select one of those, it shows me all those inputs, and I can load that into the view, and it will immediately load up my herbicide and my insecticide and my carrier, and I could change the rates if need be and fill that out what's appropriate for this application on this field. Go into the general operation and again you can fill out all the information for the operator all the way down through the comments, the soil conditions, the sensitive areas of the field, field weather, and there again if you if you fill out the field weather, if you want field weather you have to be at the field level. So I'll hit add local weather and it's going to populate that with all that information. You can fill out the equipment information as well as the health and safety if there's something that's appropriate for you to be recording that for. And once that is all filled out, 
we would come up here and hit the Save button and save it there again, just like what I was showing you before as a recommendation to be pushed out to this particular field. At this level, I'm going to come down here to the Activities, and when I click on the Activities, you'll notice it's blank because I'm selected on imagery, if you see right there in the middle top, uh, kind of the middle center, I mean. If I click on Activities, that shows me all my different layers, what I've collected thus far. If I want to look at any of these, I would select that. Uh, let me back up one step. I'm going to hit the back button in the top right corner. Here at the, the field view, if you select like you're scouting, then the scouting itself, there's the information in it. You can come up here to the top right to the box in the drop down and look at and create a quick report. But it's the most simplest report that we have. You can enter a name or take the default and it will generate report based upon what you had done out there in the field for that particular scouting operation. And of course it's got your contact information like I showed you there earlier. So that's the easiest, simplest, quickest way to get a report. A second way to get a report is to come up here, not load any activities, but keep it with the activities shown there. Hit the upload arrow, and you'll notice there's two different options, data bullet shapefile plus the reports. If I click the reports, it pops up and I can run an activity report. So I'll choose the activity and I'll run those two, what I've done today for the 2018 season. Give it a name or take the default, let it populate that, go through, do the querying, and once it finishes, it, you'll get a little nicer, nicer, neater, aesthetic looking report here as far as more information and any of the images or anything that you may have put on this field. Now, this was the field that I saved the images to, but if I, if I shut this down, hit the back button, hit my uh, three little parallel bars, go back to my field one, and on field one, if I come in here now and hit my upload arrow and go to the reports, and go to the actual scouting and recommendation. This is a second type of report, or sorry, a third type of report, and I'm going to run both of those because this is the field that I saved the images on, and I could take an, an enter in a name or just take the default, and it's going to query against the database, pull that information up, and appear. it will appear here on the report, and there's those images that we took out there in the field, the corner leaf aphids and the palmer amaranth, with all the specific detailed information pertaining to our scouting, pertaining to our scouting recommendation and the products that we're going to use at hand. You can also print this off in the top right corner, and this, this goes for every one of the kinds of reports that we create. You can print it, so if you've got the print option and you've already set this up and made it available, you can print that to the printer that you would have set up as an air printer, or you could hit the Save button in the top right corner, and on that one, you could save that to the notes on your iPad or iPhone, or you could email it to yourself or to your customer, or you've got other op options to save the files down at the bottom. So. I'll hit the back arrow and come back here and I'll show you one last thing and that is I'm going to go up to the farm view which is showing me all three farms with all of these particular fields. So I'm at the farm view now and if I go over into the view of the farm and I'll hit the green, uh, sorry, hit the orange with the circle with the plus sign in it and go to scouting because I have it set to polygon, there's all my 12 fields and I could come in here and select all the fields that I'm going to have planted to a particular crop and fill that out what specifically needs to be filled out and not have to go from field to field to field if this was an appropriate way to utilize the information. And again, at this point, I'm, I'm filling information out on 9 of 12 fields, and the database inputs are the same as I taught you at the field level. You just go down through the crop, the crop condition, stage growth, the growth stage, all of this, and fill this information out for the weeds as well as for the insects, diseases, and so forth, and save that out. The whole point being that you don't have to do it field by field by field if that's appropriate for you to record that type of information. So I'm at the farm level. The last thing I'll show you here is if I go back one layer and I'm at the actual grower level itself. So if I pick on, in this case, I'll go to Jim Abbott. And on Jim Abbott, if I hit the plus sign and go to my actual scouting, it's going to show me all the fields that belongs to this particular grower, not just the ones that we had at the farm level. So you can do it at the grower level, you can do this recording information at the farm level, and you can do this information down at the field level. Um, the last thing that I will show you is I'm going to run down to a field level view, and I'll just pick one of these fields. When I'm down at the field level view, and I'm here, I'll come in here with the plus sign down at the bottom and do a scouting operation, and in this case I've got everything set to do scouting by a polygon, but if I choose to do it by a point, I'll, teach, I'll tell you here as I go through here and explain to it what's happening. So if you want to visit XY locations to make sure that what you're doing is taking care of the problem at hand, 
then you can choose to do it by point. At the end of the day, the only difference between point and polygon is points give you point XY latitude longitude locations to go back and revisit at those exact XY locations to make sure that you're justifying what you're putting on and doing as far as your chemical sprays and the like is doing the job that you need it to do. If you do it by polygon, you're just gonna have to remember in your memory bank exactly where that spot might have been. But with an XY point, you're gonna be able to walk back to the same spot. Both of those recommendations, whether it's point rec or a polygon rec at the end of the day, is going to be tied to the entire field. So if you were out there in the field with GPS, you could hit the blue button wherever you're standing at, and I'm just going to do a long hold and drop a point, and it would drop that point at that XY location. Now you're back to the same database inputs as what I was teaching you on the polygons. You go down through your scouting for your crop information, fill all of that out. Do the same thing for your weeds and fill all of that out, and it's no different. And you could come in here and pinpoint these different XY locations for where you want to store this information. Now, I will point out to you, if you do it by point today in 4.0, series 4.0, we don't have a copy and a paste for the points, so you have to fill it out for each one of the points. If you do it by polygon, there is a copy and paste, and it's that uh, multi-select tool. But here on the points, you have to fill out each one of those points today in 4.1. 4.2, which will be out by the time most folks will get into the actual crop scouting themselves uh, or into the crop scouting height of the season itself, will have that option in there. It's just not available right now because we haven't released that. So you've got polygons, you've got points, and you've got the different reports that you can run. And just to reiterate real quickly, I'll cancel. And the reports are at the field level or farm level or grower level, doesn't matter but you'll see your activities and you go hit that upload error on the top right corner and when that pops up you've got your reports you can go run and of course here's all the different reports if you're running Cirrus out of the box the free version basically the only reports you can run are the quick report and the activity report if you're running Cirrus premium you can run those two kinds of reports plus the scouting and recommendation and the recommendation summary itself um, above and beyond that you can do these same reports at the farm level and the grower level, and at the end of the day when you finish this, you'll be wanting to sync that in that bottom right corner down there to make sure you make a backup of it and you have it over on your system back at the office. That concludes kind of a, a high-level view here what you can do with Cirrus as far as crop scouting goes and how to utilize crop scouting by polygon or by point. If you have any questions, please contact us at SST and let us know. My email is brichardson at sstsoftware.com. Shoot me an email and we can follow up and find out any questions to an or any answers to any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.